Hello again and welcome back to our course on Project 2019 Advanced. Now we've already spent quite a bit of time looking at reporting on the course and you may find your heart sinking a little to find that we're going to do some more reporting now. But the sort of reporting we're doing here is very different from the reporting that we've done so far on the course and it's very different in a number of ways. The first way in which it's different is that it uses two other pieces of software. It uses Microsoft Excel and it uses Microsoft Visio. And you may not have both or either of those pieces of software. Now with that in mind, you may think that you can skip this section and move on to something else. But I think it's very important that you follow this anyway, because visual reporting is what we're going to look at here and is a very important aspect of Project 2019. Now, I mentioned earlier on in the course that up to a couple of versions ago, the standard reporting in Project was very poor and the improvements that were made in Project 2013 dramatically improved what was available. So visual reporting was a, a real revolution when it was introduced, not only because it greatly increased the scope of reports in Project 2019, but because it made it very straightforward to use the power of two other very substantial pieces of software Excel and Visio to give you even more flexible and powerful reporting options. Having said that, I'd like you to follow this section even if you don't have Excel or Visio, as it's very important to understand that you won't really be able to do much with visual reporting unless you do have one or both of those products. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take version 15 of the website project and just show you what happens when you create a visual report. So I'm going to go to the report tab and click on visual reports. And that brings up the visual reports create report dialog. And the first thing to note is at the top, you've got two check boxes, Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Visio. You would normally check whichever of those products you have. So if you only have Excel and not Visio, you can uncheck Visio. The full set of reports, that's all that's available to you are here. And you can see here that I actually have 10 reports. Now these are the reports that are available to me because I only have Microsoft Excel checks. So I don't actually have Visio on my PC, but if you do and you check that checkbox, then your list of reports available to you will be much longer. Now I'm going to start by doing an Excel report. Now let me tell you a couple of things before I do. First of all, each of the individual tabs here contains some of the reports that are listed under all. And three tabs, task usage, resource usage, and assignment usage, are what we call time phased reports. Now time phasing is important because for the time phased reports, you need to specify what units of time you want the data from the project sliced into. So by default, my data is divided into weeks. So if you wanted months, you could change that in this little drop down menu. Now I'm going to stick with weeks and the other three categories, so task summary, resource summary and assignment summary are not time phased. Now another point to make here is that for each of those reports, they use a special type of report template. And you can actually get report templates from other sources. If you're going to use a template from another source, you check this box here, include report template from, and you can then actually browse to a report template that you've got from somewhere else, perhaps a colleague that has made a suitable template, and you can use that to create a visual report. Now I'm gonna uncheck that. Now I'm just gonna use standard ones here for the moment, and I'll talk about how to change those later. But I'm going to start with task usage report, and I only have one available to me in Excel, and that is the cash flow report. So let's click on the view button at the bottom, and you'll notice the report gathering reporting data. Now what it's actually done is to create my cash flow report, and as part of doing that, it opened Microsoft Excel. Now I'll talk about this cash flow report in just a moment, but if I wanted to do some work on this cash flow report, I would have to work on it in Excel. The idea now is that I have created this report and if I want to customize it in some way, that the work I'll do is in Excel. So at the risk of repeating myself a few too many times, if you haven't got Excel, and in fact you need a relatively recent version of Excel, then you're not going to be able to do this. 
and the same will of course apply to Visio. So let's just see what we've actually got here in Excel. I'm going to assume that you're familiar with Excel to understand this explanation. If you don't know Excel at all, if you've never used it, you may well be a bit lost in this. However, I would like you to continue to watch because I'm going to try to explain it in reasonably straightforward terms and I think you need to get the concept of what's going on even if you haven't used Excel before. Now with Excel we have worksheets and you can see the worksheets at the bottom. I currently have two, chart one and task usage. And those worksheets are part of a wider workbook. And worksheet one, which has chart one written on it, this has my cash flow report. But there is another worksheet there called task usage. And this is the sheet that contains the data that was exported from Microsoft Project, the time phase data that was exported into Excel for me. Now, one of the things that may have slightly mystified you so far is that you may be wondering why, when we said that we wanted data in weeks, why have we got our data in quarters? Well, what you're looking at here is essentially a pivot table. And a pivot table lets you slice and dice the data any way you like. So having passed data over, if you look up towards the top here into the data itself, it's in a structured form. And the data here is primarily cost data and cumulative cost data. So you can see how it's accumulating over the four quarters that cover this project. If I took uh, Q2 here for 2016 and click on the plus icon, you can now see it divided down into individual weeks. So that's the significance of my choice of weeks there. So although the report has been created on the basis of quarters, its starting point was data that's available in weeks. Now I could, if I wanted to expand out all of these quarters by going to the pivot table tools, clicking on analyze and selecting expand field, and that will expand all of those weeks out for me. And let me go back to my chart again. And you can now see how that's affected my chart. It's starting to look a little bit crazy now that I've expanded all of those quarters. Now I'm not going to dwell too much on this. You can see obvious problems there like the formatting of the horizontal axis. But as you can see, there's a lot of flexibility there in how you slice the data in the time direction. Now, if I jump back to the pivot table itself, you can also choose how to plot your cost or how to plot cumulative cost. If you wanted to add additional fields, you could do in the field list at the side here. And you could, if you wanted to, specify those before you create the reports. But one of the big advantages of the use of pivot tables and the associated pivot charts is that once you've got your starting data, and in this case, the data is in units of weeks, you can really customize the way that it's presented in a huge number of ways. So one very simple way here, given cost and cumulative cost of the field values that I've got, if we go back to the chart, click on cost, and then we can choose the pivot chart fields that we want to show. So let's say I decide I don't want to show cost at the moment, so I'm going to untick that field. So I've now just got cumulative cost. So again, this is a very flexible system. Now you're going to need to know quite a bit about Excel charting in order to make the most of this, although there are very many elements of Excel charting now strongly correspond to those in Project 2019, as you'll probably realise just by looking at the user interface here and the panel on the right. But there's still quite a lot to learn and pivot tables and pivot charts are a whole additional area to learn about in Excel as well. But hopefully, even just on a basis of that straightforward demonstration, you get some idea of the additional flexibility and power that are available using visual reports in Project 2019. So that's it for this section. I will see you in the next one.